Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to be demonstrating an indicator that I created that measures the high and low of the overnight range and plots the high and low from the overnight range into the regular trading session hours. So for instance, I've got a chart here of YM, that's the E-mini Dow futures, and you can see the red line and the green line those represent the highs that occurred in the previous overnight session and the length of those lines as they extend horizontally compose the regular session hours of that instrument. Also you can see that we've got a section highlighted in yellow, it's shaded yellow, and that is the alert section. Now that is adjustable, you can set your start and end time, it just needs to be within the regular session hours or it won't really extend beyond that, okay? So I'm going to show you how this indicator plots, I'm going to show you, it does a whole lot more than it does here on the screen, I'm going to show you uh, several days back, I've got it set up so that it plots, oh I think up to three weeks back, because I want you guys to see how price action reacts to the overnight high and low. I think it's very intriguing when I did some review and I looked at different instruments and we'll be doing that in this video. I looked at gold, I looked at bonds, I looked at, I think I looked at the euro and I drew some Fibonacci retracements and I thought boy this is looking really curious. And curious to my eyes, I can't make a profit trading so I published the videos and I produced the tools for you guys to make the best use of the platform. So along with that I'll go ahead and cover the disclaimer and that is that I'm not a professional trader nothing in this video should be interpreted as an advertisement or a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument this indicator does not really plot buy and sell signals I don't propose to know how you could use this indicator to make trading decisions and make a profit so I'm going to show you how this indicator works. I'm going to show you how you can adjust the inputs. It's going to be able to display a whole lot more than you see here. It's not just two lines in a shaded area. There's a lot more to this. So stay tuned. And then at the end of the video, we're going to post a link where you can go ahead and download this study. It is going to be a study file, so it's not going to be a copy-paste. It's going to be download and save and import. Okay, so you guys know the difference there. If you've downloaded a lot of our study files then you understand how that import process works. If you have any questions about how that works then you can simply go to our website, go to the Q&A forum and the more questions that are asked about that and the more answers we provide the easier it will be for people to resolve any issues that come up. Okay so let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to pause for just a second and I'll come right back and we'll show you some charts. Well, we've got a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to try and speed through as quickly as I can, but I want to make sure I'm thorough and cover all the details. Let me see. I'll mention first off that I believe that this indicator is most likely going to be beneficial with futures. So maybe Forex, some kind of an instrument that has extended hours and also a regular hours of trade. And you can use this, maybe you can use this on stocks. What I found in practice, and we'll review a few charts that you can see, what I found in practice is that with regular stocks there's not always a whole lot of activity in the overnight extended hour session and so usually the high and low of the overnight on a stock is very tight. Now you may have other stocks that have quite a wide range in overnight trade. For instance, you would have oh, well ETFs that are based on indexes or commodities. They will likely have a, a quite an active extended hour session so this indicator might be applied to those but if you're looking to apply this on you know stock like Starbucks or Mosaic or Intel those might not really have much action going on in the extended hours and might not be very useful oh and I forgot to mention darn it I should have mentioned that in the first uh, section of the video this also includes a scan we're going to include 
a scan that you can use for this uh, indicator. And that scan will also be able to send text and email alerts. We're going to show you how to set that up. So stay tuned. Uh, don't miss any of this video because we're going to cover a lot and uh, I don't want you to miss anything important. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the beginning of this chart. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning of the chart. You can see I've drawn a Fibonacci and I can shrink this range here. These are just my standard levels that I use for my Fibonacci drawings. You can see the price retracements, the 50% and the 61.8 and then also the uh, what you would call extensions. Okay, these are Fibonacci extensions. Anything above and below the high and the low, those are extension levels. So what I like to do often, and this I got from studying under various professional traders, is uh, especially Pat Barron with Trade the System. He is a huge fan of Fibonacci's. And I've also listened to uh, the Fibonacci Queen. She learned her craft from Robert Miner who did a book called High Probability Trading Setups. I learned a great deal about how the professionals use Fibonacci tools. So I've got some good background on that. I just wish I could have made money doing it. Okay, so I've explained these levels. Let's go back and shrink that range back to automatic. And you can see that in, in this case, the overnight range okay, created a band within which the uh, instrument traded sort of in the middle. Okay, and then eventually at the end, closed up above the highs. Let's go ahead and just, we're going to go forward one more. We're going to do this with many instruments. Pretty short, that's probably a holiday. We really don't want to pay attention to holiday stuff. And so here we go. This is kind of an interesting one. You can see that once the price action broke above the overnight high, that it extended up and it took a little break here at the 50% level, went up to the 100% level. Look at this, it retraced all the way back to the overnight high where it found support and then continued up and again it got hung up at this 50% level. This is kind of what I like to do is look at charts and find out exactly what are the, the internal components of the market creating in the price action. And so somebody's looking at these levels obviously. So let's go ahead and uh, reset that so it auto adjusts. And once again here we have overnight high and low and we punch through it we come back down through it and eventually we find support at that overnight high and we close up at the 50 percent level now i'm going to speed up here a little bit so that you guys can see what's going on here i just want you to pause and just look at that price action and see where the reaction points are where are the wicks the tails of those candles and see how this is sort of corresponding and lining up with the fibonacci levels I was really surprised to find this. I don't know why. I'm, you know, Fibonacci's are amazing tools. And look at this one here as well. This one went up to the overnight highs, came back down in a 50% range. So it's 50% of the overnight high and low, and then went right back up to it. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to pause when I see something of interest here. Okay, so we're all the way. Now, let's go ahead and review a few of the others. I'm going to bring the chart all the way back to the left. And let's just quickly examine some of these other charts. Okay, so here we'll take a look at crude oil. We've got a couple of Fibonacci's marked here. And you can see, again, the 50% uh, the range seemed to be very crucial to that overnight range and the price action during the regular session. I'll also point out in this case, notice that the green and red line for the overnight high and low extends into a different area. Okay, so the code is going to read what Thinkorswim has determined is the beginning and end of the regular session hours. And so if you see this, for instance, oil, oil starts its regular session about an hour earlier than the overall general market, you know, the um, what you would call the equity indexes. Okay, so keep that in mind that this code is going to automatically adjust depending on what instrument is uh, being being charted here. So again, we have the 50% retracement in uh, in play here. And again, we've got the 50% level and high uh, action there. And here we go all the way down. We, we open here a regular session near the overnight low and we punch down to 50% extension there. And then we bounce right back up. We find some uh, price action here, reaction down at the at the 50% and let's see, we'll just, I don't have any more fibs drawn on that one. So let's go back over here. 
Let's take a look at gold. We can see again there's reaction here at at least 61.8%. You can see that in play again here. The 50% is in play here. Look how it opened right at the overnight low and got hung up here a little bit at the 50% retracement of that and then went immediately to the overnight high. And so the overnight high and low became the range. So here we go, just the opposite is true here. It opens at the overnight high, comes down, finds support in the 50 to 61.8% zone. And look at that. So I find that this is a pretty interesting study. Uh, when you start drawing fibs and find out where prices react, sometimes you find some valuable information. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, let's see if I did the Russell. I'm trying to remember here. I put these together last week sometime and don't exactly remember. Oh yeah, good, so I did do the Russell. I think I found some really interesting ones here. You can see that the overnight range created these Fibonacci extension levels that played a very important role in price action. Do you see how prices stopped right here at the 100%? And again, towards the end of the day, it also reacted there very, very strongly. Something's going on there. Somebody is watching these levels. And so let's see, so we'll go ahead and look at some other sections here that I marked out. This was a pretty wild day for the Russell. And you can see that the uh, overnight low, it tried to hold the overnight low and failed, but it, it gave up a good fight there. And it blasted right through the 50% extension, right to the, the, it's actually, it says 200%, but that's actually a 100% extension to the downside. Look at how that was uh, in play the rest of the day. Wow, interesting. Okay, so this one here is just the opposite. It's uh, to the upside. You can see that prices took off immediately, met some resistance at the 50%, uh, very strong resistance at the 100%, pulled back, almost touched those overnight highs again, and then moved right back up, and this time went all the way to the 127 extension. So guys, you get the idea, right? I mean, this is just a good exercise for you. Just go ahead and start drawing fibs based upon some price structure that you think might be relevant, and you may be surprised to find something of value. So I think that there's a potential for something here, but uh, it's up to you guys. This is the tool. I'm providing it. I, I can't explain you know, to you how to make trading decisions using it because if I could, then I wouldn't be doing this video. I'd be making money instead. So let's see. Now I'm going to show you how you can adjust the different parameters and get the uh, different things to plot on the indicator. And then we'll get into showing you how to do the scans. So stay tuned. I'm going to pause the video for just a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'll show you, we'll go ahead and zoom out so that we can see all of the chart data. And you can see, as I was scrolling through, you can see that I've got all those fibs that were drawn. And the indicator is plotting several days into the past. And I'm going to first show you how you can take that and set it so that it only plots on the current day. We are in the overnight session currently. So if we adjust this to only show Monday's price action, the indicator is really not going to plot anything because the overnight session doesn't end until tomorrow morning at the open. So we're going to edit studies. I'm going to turn off the one we've been viewing. There are a lot of settings in here, so I actually cheated. I added the indicator twice, one with one set of settings and another with a different set of settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this so that the number of days, you see it was set to 16. That number includes weekends. So if you want to say, look at the last five trading days, you have to consider whether there's a weekend involved there. It's going to count Saturday and Sunday. So adjust that accordingly. If you only wanted to show today's current level, then you would set it to zero. Okay. If we do that now because we're in the overnight session, it will not plot anything until tomorrow morning when the market resumes its regular session hours. So instead, we're going to change it to a 1 here. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK and apply and OK. And we've got all these Fibonacci levels set up here. And I just remembered, I just got done telling you about the weekend. Guess what? This is the overnight session Monday. So really, if we need to uh, uh, look at Friday, really what we want to do is plot this for Friday. We actually have to set that. Uh, to a value of 2 to account for the weekend days. All right, so I hit OK and apply and OK. And now you can see I still have my Fibonacci's up there that I drew earlier, but 
there are no plots of this indicator except for the uh, Friday, the most recent completed trading day. So you can see that the indicator starts plotting at the start of the regular session hours. And aside from that, you won't see it at all. If we set it to zero, as I said, we're currently in the overnight session. So you won't see anything until tomorrow morning when the equity markets open. Okay, so you can see immediately there's something new here. We've got some levels that are being plotted. And I want to show you what those are. Uh, you probably already guessed what they are by now. And you can go ahead and set up a drawing here, which I've already got my drawing tool set up. If you go ahead, and I'm not going to get this exact because I don't have any way to snap to those levels with the drawing, but you can see how my Fibonacci tool uh, lines up with all of these levels here that are plotted in white, and the dashed lines in white. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that so that you can see that's what those lines are. They're exactly the Fibonacci levels. And I'll show you where you can adjust those. We'll go to Studies, Edit Studies. And we'll click this gear icon here. And so what happens here, see we've got this plot fib is set to yes. Okay, that's uh, fib one, uh, fib two, all of those are set to yes. So you can turn off individual ones and you can see the fib coefficients are listed here. All of those levels are derived from these values. And that's how you set that up and these mirror how they appear in the Fibonacci drawing tool in Thinkorswim. So if you already have your favorite levels saved in your Fibonacci tool, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to cancel and cancel. I'll go ahead and we'll draw that fib again. I'm not going to try to make it exact. So we'll right click and go to properties. So you can see these coefficients here. You see these values. So I made the indicator to mirror exactly how the drawing tool in Thinkorswim does it. So you can take those values right off of your Fibonacci tool, plug them right into the indicator, and then they will work exactly as they do with the Fibonacci drawing tool. We'll go ahead and delete that Fibonacci, remove drawing. We'll go back to studies, edit studies, okay, and now you can see on the original one that I had, uh, this second one down here, this is the one we were viewing first, and it didn't display any Fibonacci levels. Well, see, if you look at the settings for that one, you can see that all of the Fibonacci's, 1 through 10, are all set to no. That's why they weren't displaying. So you can turn these on or off. If you only want to see two or three Fibonacci levels, then you turn off all of them except the ones you want to see. And with 10 levels available, I think that should be plenty sufficient for what you guys will need. So then we'll go ahead and look at the one that's being plotted currently. Go, go ahead and hit the gear icon you can see that we also have the ability to show the FIB labels. Okay, that's currently set to no. It defaults to yes. So I'm going to change that to yes and watch what happens when we change that on the chart. Now we've got the Fibonacci levels are plotted right there in the chart bubbles. So that in case you don't recognize what level each one is, they've got, they've got labels available that you can plot. And if you turn off one of these levels, then the bubble also disappears. Okay, so the bubble sometimes get in the way of price action, so we provide you guys the ability to turn that on and off. Now there's a couple of more things I want to show you. There's a couple of alerts that are built into this indicator, uh, alerts that show up on the chart, and then once we get done showing that, we're going to show you how to do the scans because the scans are going to be picking up that very same alert that shows up on the screen, and it's going to pick it up for the duration of the alert time span that you have defined here, this yellow shaded area. We're going to show you how to adjust that as well. So there's lots more to come here and I'm trying to wrap things up quickly. I know the video is getting long, so bear with me here. And I think the first thing I'll show you after we come back here from our little pause, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and edit studies. We're going to click this gear icon. I'm going to show you how to adjust the span of the alert period. You see these two, the first two inputs at the very top, alert period start, alert period end. They're set to whatever your chart's uh, time frame. My charts have always been set to Eastern time zone because I key into the equity markets, you know, the NICE, everything's based out of New York. If you're futures, then you probably want to base everything out of Chicago. I don't like local time on the chart because it confuses me. Uh, I, I reference everything in an Eastern time frame mindset. So we'll go ahead and look at this. If we change this, 
let's say we, we skip the first half hour, okay? We change that to 10 o'clock. And let's say we wanted to extend this all the way out to noon. Okay, whoops, too many zeros there. And then watch on this uh, yellow shaded area. Watch what happens when we hit OK. And as soon as we hit Apply, watch it shift. Okay, so that's how you adjust the alert period. The alert, okay, you see the arrow, you see this pink arrow right here? Okay, that's signaling uh, the price coming down and hitting that overnight low area. We've got two different types of alerts set up for each of the overnight levels. We've got one set up for the overnight high and one set up for the overnight low. I'll explain those next. So you can see that the alerts are only going to be triggered it within those shaded areas. And this is also going to be applied to your scan. So you'll only be alerted via the scan if it signals according or within, I should say, the shaded area. So go ahead and click the gear icon again and we'll look at the inputs. We've got alert on break, okay, that is set to yes by default. And we've got alert on pullback, okay, and that is set to yes as well. So I'm going to explain each of those as we continue looking at this chart. So I'll go ahead and hit cancel because I didn't want to save any changes there. Let's scroll back in time a little bit. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. We've got to turn on the plot so we can see the rest of it. Yeah. So let me show you guys real quick here. We'll go to edit studies and we'll turn on the other study real quick. We'll turn this one off. We'll turn the other one back on because this is the one that plots all the way back in time. And then we'll go back and we'll look at some of these signals. Okay. So here, what you have here, this is what's called a pullback. Okay. This is a pullback to the high. So we've got one alert here that is set up when prices move outside of the overnight high or low and pull back to it, then we've got that set up and it works on both the overnight high as well as the overnight low. So it's called the pullback alert. Okay. And then let's see, we'll scroll through here till we find another one. So this one, you see the arrow right down here. This one is an alert that's set when you break out of the overnight high or low. So this one in particular is the break above the overnight high and we've got another one that reciprocates on the overnight low. So we'll scroll through here and here's another one. We got an alert that occurred right here at the open and let's see. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you on those alerts. Now these will not only display on your chart with the arrows pointing up or pointing down depending on the direction, but these also include audible and textual alerts. So these alerts will show up. Uh, they'll, you'll hear the chime or the bell or whatever you've got it set to, and you'll be able to see it in the message center, and it will show up here in the upper left area with those textual alerts that you usually see with studies that include that. So that's how you work the, the chart-based version of the indicator. Next, I'm going to show you how to run the scan. And I'm going to show you some examples from last week that I ran. I actually ran this scan with the alerts turned on. And I'll show you what those look like. And we'll get into that next. OK, and we're getting really close to the point where we're going to display the link where you can download the study file. And I think on the website, we're going to simply post the scan as a, in, a, in a code box where you can copy and paste the scan because that makes the most sense. So you'll be able to go directly to our website where we post this video on our website. And within the video description, there'll be some code that you can copy and paste for the scan. But for the actual chart indicator, that's going to be a study file that you will download, save, and import into Thinkorswim. That won't be a copy or paste operation. So let's go ahead and look at the scan. I've gone ahead and saved a couple here. This one I just call it range break alert. So I've got one that tells me whenever there's a break, a breakout or a breakdown. And then the other one, remember, is the pullback alert. So I've got actually uh, two scans set up and saved. And I'll show you what they look like. You go to uh, Market Watch under alerts, you can see that I've got a couple set up here. One is a range break alert. One is a range pullback alert. Okay, these were added to my alerts from the scan screen. I'll show you how to do that. 
So now we'll go back to scan. And what you do when you want to set up your scan, remember this is an indicator that needs to be able to view the extended hours trade. So in this case, I've checked the box that says include extended hours trading session. Very important, if you don't do that, the code will not have access to the overnight high and low information. It will not work, it just won't function. So we've got this one set up to five minute. It really just depends on how often you want to be alerted. You can set it to one minute and every time a new one minute bar comes around, you've got a chance for an alert. If you want to be notified less frequently, then just use a higher time frame. I've got a 15 that's kind of in the middle of the range. So if you wanted to go ahead and build this, let me show you how you wanted to do this right from scratch. I'm going to delete that. So we're starting off with a brand new clean slate here. And you can see that I'm scanning in a list, a list that I use quite frequently. And it's just a list of the high flying stocks, you know, the big ones, the most popular, the highest, uh, the ones that are most talked about on CNBC kind of thing. And remember what I said is that you need to carefully uh, select what you scan against. I chose a list of stocks and I found out through practice that it's really not the best tool for using on stocks. You probably want to use something more along the lines of an opening range breakout. And guess what? We're probably going to do a video on one of those next or maybe a couple of videos. But very soon we're going to be doing an opening range breakout. It's going to be based upon the same engine of this code that we've got and it's going to have pretty much the same tools as far as what I can envision so far. So really what I would suggest is that you probably want to use something that has a lot of overnight action, something like a futures contract, maybe a Forex. I haven't tested this with Forex, so go ahead and check it out with Forex and see if it works. And oh, the other thing was uh, ETFs that are based on indexes or, and or commodities. All right, so in order to set this up, you would add a study filter. So I click the add study filter button and then you go ahead over here and you can change that time frame to 15 minute. The checkbox, remember, include extended hours trading session. That's already checked for us. And then you click this little pencil icon here. The other way that you can access the code editor is you can use this drop down here for the default and go to custom. And that's the same as clicking on the pencil in the far right. Whichever one you remember, use that. So then we go ahead and delete everything that's here. And I've got the code for the scan off screen. I'm just going to uh, copy and paste that over. There we go. We have no compiler errors. You, and you can see we've got two ways to run scans. We've got one that does a break of the high and or a break of the low. And we've got another one that does a pullback to the high or pull back to the low. And you can pull those out and you can run them individually if you want. You can break this out into four different pieces, create four different scans and save them individually. And each, each one that you save, you'll be able to generate alerts that are specific to that particular scan. So I'll let you guys play around with this. Really all you would do to change this from a break of high or break of low to break of high and not uh, anything else is you just erase this. Yeah, you just you, that little text that I've highlighted there. You just delete that, and then you can copy that line down, and you can have another scan run, and you just would delete this section here. And that's the way you would split those out so that you can do a scan of the break of the high, and you could do a separate scan for break of the low. Okay, so that's how that works. Now let me explain to you the minimum range. What's that? Minimum range. It's up here in the inputs. What I do is I said, okay, well, again, going back to stocks, stocks tend to have a very minimal amount of overnight activity. And so if you're going to use this for stocks, I would suggest that you do some study, find out uh, which value is going to be relevant here. In this case, it's going to be uh, tick size. So it's 10 ticks. Now, stocks are incremented in pennies, so this would be 10 cents. So an overnight range of 10 cents really is not a lot. If you're going to be using this on an um, on a instrument that trades a lot in overnight hours, then you would have to adjust this accordingly. For stocks, you may have to use a much larger. And all this does really is it says, if the overnight range wasn't significant, well, you got to pick that value, what is significant. But if it wasn't significant, then we're not even going to bother including it in the alerts. So it's not going to be picked up by the scan and it's not going to send an alert and it's going to clean up your work considerably. 
and then all you would do at this point is click OK and then you would want to make sure that you save this because if you don't save it you're not going to be able to then set up your alert okay so you just click the save scan query give it a name of some kind whatever it is that you're going to remember it and then you go ahead and hit save I'm not going to make a save at this time because I don't want to save these changes and if you ever want to reload a scan that you've previously saved all you have to do is click this button again go to load scan query go to personal and I'm sorry that most of this is off screen here it's just the way thinkorswim is doing it and I've got much more real estate on the screen than I'm recording but you can see here these are all saved screens and you can see I've got the range break alert and the range pullback and I've also got a range pullback alert those are all listed down here so you must save it before you can create an alert so now once you've saved that scan in order to create the alert you click this button which is also where you can save the results of your scan to a watch list but this is the new option that they added recently this is only a been available I think for a few months it was exciting when they released this and I'm just now getting around to showing you a video that includes this new feature so you just click alert when scan results change you can't see that last part it's off screen sorry and you've got different options here that you can choose I suggest that you play around with this and experiment I'm not going to explain it in detail suffice to say these are the settings that I use you scroll down here you can see that it's set to play a sound and it does I've got it set to send an email I'll show you those emails you'll get to see what they look like if you want to blow up your phone on text messages go ahead and check that box and then you've got options down here scroll down a little bit more you can see that you can have it send you a message for every single change or a list of changes hourly daily or weekly so that's how you set that up and once you've got all your adjustments here for all the options then you go ahead and hit create so you click create and that goes ahead and adds it to your list of alerts that I showed you on market watch I'm gonna hit cancel here because I've already created mine and again I'll go back over to market watch you can see I'm on the alert tab and these are the two alerts that were created and they just stay active until you cancel them I mean they'll just keep running and running and running so if you ever need to make a change to a saved scan that you've had an alert then you'll have to just hit over here the cancel and that will cancel that existing alert then you go back to your scan make whatever changes you need to make you know time frame or direction you know whatever it is and then you'll have to recreate the alert again just like this you go over here you click this button click the option here alert when scan results change and then go through these options and, and then create so that's the process so we're going to present the link here this is the link that you're going to use it's going to appear in the upper left hand corner in a white rectangle and that is a clickable link it's going to show you the name of the study file that you're downloading and again don't try to open that okay that study file will not be read by your computer it needs to be imported into thinkorswim we've got instructions in our Q&A form how you can go ahead and import study files into thinkorswim and for the scan as I said the scan the code is going to be posted on the website and here's the link that we're going to have for our website page that's going to host this video and if you just go to that link you have to type it into your browser I'm sorry you can't click on it in the video here but uh, you go ahead and type that into your browser go to our website that's where this video is posted and you'll see a little code box that you can copy that code for the scan paste it into your your scan code editor here and create your scan okay guys this is a long video and but there's a whole lot of moving pieces here and it's funny I was sharing this with my trading buddy Larry and he, he, he was shocked you know when I said no I'm giving this away for free he says what I said yeah this I'm giving this away for free I'm not charging for this he's like he thought I was nuts you know <laughs> but uh, you guys are really great and supporting what we're doing here and the feedback is is tremendous oh I forgot to show you the email alerts darn it okay so here's the email alert totally forgot about that I'm sorry guys so here's the alerts this is what they look like uh, you just get a little thing in your inbox and I've got it set to go to a special folder and it tells you in the subject line what symbols were involved this is a range pullback alert so it whatever you see this is a range break alert 
So whatever name you used when you saved the scan, that's what's going to appear here. So consider that when you're setting that up so that it's something that you recognize when it hits your inbox. Okay, so there's the alerts for the email that is sent out by the scan. Okay, guys, so thanks a lot for watching. Really appreciate all your support. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hon-tech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.